What's up guys, it's Alex back at it with another scholarship video. If you haven't seen my full tuition scholarship video right here, definitely check that one out first. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. So first up is my friend Michelle. Um, she's a community service fellow and yeah, let's see what she has to say. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm a junior at Tulane. Um, I study history currently, but I'm also on the pre-med track. So currently I'm a community service fellow. So what that means is it's a small cohort of students every year that volunteer about 100 hours of service to Tulane and the New Orleans community. In exchange, we do receive um, some financial compensation, but it ranges from about 5,000 a year to almost 20,000, I think. What kinds of students are selected for the Community Service Fellowship? The Community Service Fellowship picks students who really demonstrate that they understand why we do service and why it's so important. And it's not just for you know personal satisfaction, but for kind of showing you want to make changes in your community and especially like ones that start really at the grassroots. So over 3,000 students applied for the Community Service Fellowship, and I think it's one of the most competitive scholarships based on numbers. So I asked Michelle what kind of set her apart from the other applicants. So it is a lot of people that do apply. However, with regards to the actual service you're doing, quantity is definitely more important than quantity. Running a food bank is great, and like, you know, donating your stockpile of beans to a soup kitchen is, again, it's really helpful and it's great for the meantime, but it really, they're really looking for service that is, first, that you show initiative and you understand, you know, again, why you're doing the service. But also, they're looking for service that, that makes a difference in, in your community specifically, because they are looking for people to, to become community leaders in the future. So every community service fellow has their special service project that sets them apart from the other applicants. So I asked Michelle what her special service project was. Yeah, so in my school district, um, there was a lot more incoming students whose primary language was Spanish in the household, and they were still learning English. So my community service was based off of um, using high school students who had already taken like like pretty advanced English classes and having them to help tutor kids who are ESL students, um, usually in elementary school, so that it was more of an emphasis so that we could start fostering that relationship when they were younger and also so that we could start developing those skills younger because we did notice that in that school district there were a lot of um, students still in the ESL program in my high school. So Michelle went on to explain that while it's important, students' understanding of English should not be a major factor utilized to determine one's intelligence. And she was obviously very passionate about her service. So in conjunction with being admitted to the Community Service Fellowship, it's the only program that requires consistent additional work in order to maintain the scholarship. So I asked Michelle if she could elaborate a little bit more on that. So the fellows are required to do about 100 hours of service every year, attend, I believe, three or four meetings a semester that do gloss over important points about the type of service you're doing, important training regarding like diversity, and a specific to the New Orleans community. In the meantime, we are kind of in the process of revising these requirements just because we do want to, I believe, like, the cohort and also the people who run this program really do want to dedicate time to having better service as opposed to just having doing a lot of it, which I think is a philosophy that suits us all. So, so then I asked her, what advice do you have for future applicants of the Community Service Fellowship? Um, I would say when you are actually doing the essay questions, and obviously like what they ask changes from year to year, but I think one of the things that stood out to me the most was there was an essay question asking, what New Orleans organization would you like to partner with? And so I spent a lot of time on this question because there's something about community service where a lot of people you know, go in expecting that they're gonna change the world and that's not gonna happen overnight. And even if you are, if you're coming into a new community, you don't know everything and you need to be aware of that because one of those, que that question is essentially asking like, are you willing to be able to work with people and show that you're, you do have some weaknesses and some strengths? So, like I said, about 3,000 students apply and admissions goes through the vast majority of them and eventually um, we do make it to the top 50. And what the director of the program does is he blacks out the GPA and ACT and all these test scores in your academic index. So I think this is the only scholarship where you're your statistics don't matter because what we're looking for is obviously the quality of your service. 
Yeah, so the current cohorts do review the application. So just, again, with any application, like keep in mind your grammar, your spelling. Also, as a tip, not a lot of people know this, but put your most important activity first. It's just a little inconvenient to do a bit of hunting. Yeah, so. I agree with that. Like these, <laughs> some of these applications are hundreds of words and we yeah. have to go through. I mean, they're meaty. We, we go through as many as we can in a period of time. So obviously we want to see your biggest thing at the top and yeah, make sure your letters of record are good and they yeah. actually also match your number one piece of service. Yeah. Obviously we're trying to see what your impact was on your community, not the multiple different service projects that you did through National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society. We wanna see what you did, that one big impact. Well, obviously Michelle offered amazing advice. Um, towards the end of the video, I'll be talking about the Weatherhead Scholarship, which is conjunction with the Community Service Fellowship. But yeah, let's move on to Sham Kakar, one of my best friends. And yeah, he received an international scholarship called the Global Scholarship. And 20% of my viewers are international. So yeah, I think this would be pretty helpful. Hi guys, my name is Sham. I'm an international student from Dubai, the UAE. Um, my family is originally from Bombay in India. I received the Presidential Scholar Award uh, and also the Global Scholarship specifically for international students. And the criteria for the scholarship is you have to be in the top 20% of the international applicants to be eligible. If you get shortlisted, then there's a video or normal uh, phone call and they go forward from there. It can be partial or full tuition. A lot of international students apply to Tulane University. So I kind of asked Sham, like what kinds of students are selected for the global scholarship? I'd say like coming in from high school, they have to be fairly academically focused, but at the same time have a uh, strong bend towards leadership, whether that's through uh, clubs or positions or, or various projects. Um, and in, in addition to that, if you have a sort of volunteering aspect, or someone who's like a holistic applicant, uh, strong with leadership, volunteering, various extracurriculars, but also being at the, the higher percentile uh, academically. Those are the most competitive international applicants. So Sean went on to explain that your GPA and ACT and SATs are very important for the preliminary rounds, but once you receive the interview, then a more well-rounded and holistic perspective is utilized uh, to evaluate the applicants. So then I asked Sean, what set him apart from the other applicants of the Global Scholarship? I think like just to be shortlisted, it was my, my grades and leadership um, activities, uh, what I was involved in high school. Um, but beyond that, like once you get the interview, it's just about seeming genuine and um, portraying that, that sort of bringing your story to life. You know, they've, they've read your story through the essays and through your grades, your transcripts, through the letters of rec. When you actually get to the interview, it's about bringing that to life and, and portraying yourself in the best light possible and staying true, true to that story you've already sort of displayed. For the final question, I asked Sham if he had any specific tips or advice for international students applying for Tulane scholarships. Okay, so in general, I'd say Tulane is one of those schools where you really want to apply early action. Um, I, I'd say this goes for if you're an international student or, or otherwise, they just give you the most consideration for merit aid and if that's something that appeals to you, definitely apply early action. It isn't binding um, and you'll just be considered for more aid almost automatically. In terms of being pretty competitive for those scholarships, your grades need to be pretty good, your SATs should be, that's sort of par for the course, but beyond that, uh, you're not just a number, obviously. Show that you're committed to Tulane, that you're a, a more interesting person, but um, it goes hand in hand. You, you need to have the grades, but also being a fairly interested and a curious person intellectually and otherwise. So I want to thank Michelle and Sham and all the other full tuition scholars for giving some of their time to me so I can relay the information back to you guys. Obviously, they're all very impressive students at Tulane, and you may even see them around campus next year. But yeah, let's move on to the um, automatic partial scholarships that you receive when you apply to Tulane. So based on your GPA and ACT and SAT, you are automatically considered for a partial scholarship from anywhere between, I think, around $20,000 to $33,000. But you definitely need to apply either early decision or early action. With that being said, there may be preferential treatment towards those applying early action versus early decision because early action is non-binding. Like I said in my previous video, 72% of Tulane students receive some sort of scholarship and 97% of Tulane students receive financial aid. 
Um, is Tulane worth it without scholarship? Well, that decision is up to you and your family. So now let me talk about my scholarship, the Weatherhead Scholarship through the Community Service Fellows. So 25 students are selected for the Community Service Fellowship and the top five of those 25 receive a full tuition scholarship called the Weatherhead Scholarship. So the Weatherhead Scholars Program was started in 2018 and kind of combined with the Community Service Fellowship. So in addition to the Community Service Fellowship's requirements, Weatherhead Scholars are expected to implement a four-year service project throughout her time at Tulane University by partnering with some sort of New Orleans nonprofit organization. So I partnered with the Audubon Nature Institute since I worked at the Audubon Zoo, which was super fun my freshman year, definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, the service project ended up being pretty successful in the beginning, but it hit some rocky moments because, because of COVID. So now through my seven year medical program, I'm now working full time for the first T, which has been amazing so far. So I may shift my service project more towards the first T and away from the Audubon Nature Institute because I'm less connected with them and more closely related with the first T now. Um, everything is up in the air because of COVID and it's really hard to get resources, but um, yeah, pretty excited and the the overall theme of giving back to the greater New Orleans community is super admirable and that's what makes the Weatherhead Scholars Program so unique and just um, really rewarding. Really rewarding. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps it up for my two-part video of the scholarships at Tulane University. If you have any specific questions, then DM me on Instagram and good luck with your applications. Peace. So we've made it to the end of the video. I just want to let you know that one of my friends created a newsletter with college admission tips. And yeah, be sure to subscribe to his link right here and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.